you are recognized as the youngest representative. You have been elected three times. 30 under 30 is something that even Forbes has recognized you for. How did you get to this point? Well, it's truly a privilege for me to be the youngest Indian American and the youngest Hindu American elected official uh, in the nation and the history of the country. In Hindu philosophy, there are principles of Satyam, Shivam and Sundaram. One of the firm things that I appreciate in Hinduism is Karmanne Vadi Karaste Ma Faleshu Kadachan, which is the principle given by Bhagavad Gita to, you know, be firm on the actions without worrying about the results. So what is one strong point in Hinduism that drives your life, that inspires you? Well, you know, for me, it's really about the values that Hinduism, uh, you know, taught me from, you know, a very young age. In the Indian American community in particular, there are more supporters for the Democrats. And um, in the Midwest state, uh, it, there are more supporters for Republicans. And still, the Desi supporters are less than the other supporters. So what efforts would you be making? What is your strong pitch for Indian community to be supporting Republicans in 2020? elections. Well, if you look at the economic and fiscal policies of the Republican Party, low taxation, low regulation, pro-business, uh, you know, pro-local control, that, those are the policies that the industries Indian Americans are in benefit from. Uh, whether it's OPI, the Indian Physician Association, AHOA, the Indian American Hotel Owners Association, uh, whether it's TAI, the, the tech entrepreneurs, you know, our uh, industries that, that our community is in benefits from Republican policies. Now, I've also been critical of my own party. We do not do a good job at showing up at Indian American and Hindu American functions and, and making the case. And so, you know, our candidates need to be able to show up and do that. Naraj Antani is staunchly pro-life, co-sponsoring the heartbeat bill. Naraj Antani fights for tax cuts and signed a pledge to oppose tax increases. He voted against the gas tax increase last year. Hinduism in America is the least known religion. Part of me turning up uh, the dial on my Hinduism uh, is to have my own identity, right? Hey everyone, we are with Neeraj Antony, the Ohio State Representative in California for HAF Gala, the Hindu American Foundation Gala in Dublin, California. Welcome, sir, to Yo India TV with me, Justine Khanuja. And first of all, let us know how's the feeling in California this time. Well, thanks for having me. It's always great to be uh, in the Bay Area here in California. Obviously, a very vibrant Indian and Hindu American population. Absolutely. And Ohio, as we know, is the land of seven presidents, the mother of seven presidents. So. All the major activities trigger from Ohio. It's the hub, it's the bellwether. So Trump wave has been all over in uh, your state and Trump's in power. So how's the economy been progressing? What's the latest trend? That's right, Ohio is the mother of presidents. We're also uh, the key swing state in any presidential election. You know, President Trump won it in 2016. We'll see uh, if he can hold on to Ohio in 2020. Uh, since JFK, whoever has won Ohio has won the presidency. Uh, the economy is very strong. Uh, you know, our biggest problem is workforce development. We have uh, a lot of open jobs, but not people with the skills uh, to fill them. But the unemployment uh, is low, uh, just as it is across the country. And so uh, we'll see what happens in 2020. So in 2016, I heard that you could not join some of the rallies held by President Trump because you were supporting the other candidate, John, right? So um, is there a change? And if so, what is that? Well, you know, I supported John Kasich, the governor of Ohio, in the presidential primary. He was our governor. Uh, you know, now the president is the president. He's the president of my party. We'll see how 2020 goes. Born and raised in Miamisburg, State Representative Naraj Antani is the conservative Republican candidate for state senator. Naraj Antani supports President Trump and sponsored a bill to defund sanctuary cities to stop the flow of illegal immigrants. He is the second Indian American state elected official in Ohio history and the first Indian American Republican. I'm sure Republican friends in the audience would be happy to hear that. Antani was named to Forbes magazine list of the top 30 under 30 people in the United States for law and politics in 2015. In 2016, Newsmax named him the second, named him the second influ most influential Republican under the age of 30 in the entire country. 
In addition, he was named to the top 30 conservatives under age 30 in the United States list by Red Alert Politics. In 2013, the Montgomery County Republican Party named him the Republican Man of the Year. Welcome, Mirich. You know, you have a very unique experience as the youngest uh, elected official in Ohio State history. Uh, you were running a campaign and you know getting elected to the state house at a time when many people were finding their first jobs out of college. Can you just talk a little bit about what that experience was like and what really inspired you to pursue the path that you did? Sure. Well, well thank you, Samir, and to Dr. Magani and, and everyone uh, here with HAF for, for having me. Uh, you know, that, that's a good question. I was elected. Uh, when I was 23, about four and a half years ago, and uh, you know, frankly, we, we thought that you know me being Indian American and Hindu and my name, you know, might be a factor. My district, you know, sort of unlike uh, many districts where Indian Americans and Hindu Americans serve, my district is significantly white, significantly Christian, uh, very conservative, and so we thought it would be an issue. But uh, really, the issue became my age. I was, I was 23. I was a year and a half out of college. Uh, you know, luckily I was born and raised in the district that, that I, I represented, but you know, as I served for four years uh, as the youngest uh, legislator in Ohio, uh, and still serve as the youngest Indian American and Hindu uh, legislator in the country, and, and I, I also take that as a responsibility. You know, my parents immigrated in 1978, became citizens in 1984, uh, worked for Hewlett Packard, you know, based here uh, in the Bay Area, uh, and, and built the American dream. Uh, and only because of those of you who did that, the immigrant generation, am I able to serve uh, in the capacity in which I am. And so I take that as a duty and a responsibility for the next generation of Hindus, for the next generation uh, of Indian Americans and South Asian Americans. And, and I see that as, as my job uh, to, to carry out uh, you know, uh, our community's wishes and needs uh, for the next generation. So, uh, Neeraj, you must be aware that in the Indian community, I mean the Indian American community in particular, there are more supporters for the Democrats. And um, in the Midwest state, uh, it, there are more supporters for Republicans and still the Desi supporters are less than the other supporters. So what efforts would you be making? What is your strong pitch for Indian community to be supporting Republicans in 2020 elections? Well, if you look at the economic and fiscal policies of the Republican Party, low taxation, low regulation, pro-business, uh, you know, pro-local control, that, those are the policies that the industries Indian Americans are in benefit from. Uh, whether it's OPI, the Indian Physician Association, AHOA, the Indian American Hotel Owners Association, uh, whether it's TIE, the, the tech entrepreneurs, you know, our uh, industries that, that our community is in benefits from Republican policies. Now, I've also been critical of my own party. We do not do a good job at showing up at Indian American and Hindu American functions and, and making the case. And so, you know, our candidates need to be able to show up and do that. Naraj Antani is staunchly pro-life, co-sponsoring the heartbeat bill. Naraj Antani fights for tax cuts and signed a pledge to oppose tax increases. He voted against the gas tax increase last year. Uh, Neeraj, you talked a little bit about the demographics in the area that you ran. Uh, did you find any particular challenges being Indian American or Hindu American? Sure. You know, I, I think that um, you know a few things. Again, you know, a lot of the focus was on uh, my age, but you know, in 2014, when I was first running, going door to door, again, heavily. Caucasian, heavily Christian uh, environment, I would go to the door and, and they would answer and they would obviously notice I am uh, Indian uh, and you know some of them know what Hinduism, some some don't. Uh, and so the, the most common response I would get is, hey, do you know Dr. Patel? And I would say, yes, I do know Dr. Patel. And, and while we are not the Bay Area with your population of, of Indian Americans, we have a, a little bit. And then uh, I would get a question and say, hey, um, you know, do you like Amar India or Jeet India, which are our two Indian restaurants in Dayton? Uh, but then I would get questions like, hey, just what is that dot that Indian women wear on their heads? Just why don't you all eat meat? Why is the, veg why is the menu at all these Indian restaurants uh, vegetarian? Hey, what is that marble place behind that tree line in Beaver Creek, our temple, right? Now, I could have chosen to get offended and play the victim and uh, you know, uh, say, oh, you know, racism, etc. But I took it as genuine interest, right, and an opportunity to educate someone who was 
maybe asking out of curiosity, maybe a little bit of hesitation, uh, but also as an opportunity to tell them, you know, what the bindi signifies, what the temple is, and that they can come on any Sunday, and that Bill Gates, you know, would get his meals there when, when he was a college dropout, et cetera, and, and the values of, of what our community are. Uh, and so, you know, they could have been challenges. Uh, I took them as, as opportunities, and, um, you know, frankly, I think we're benefited by, everyone knows uh, an Indian doctor or uh, they know uh, a, a, you know, Indian professor, et cetera. And so they may not have, uh, you know, info or, or experience on the Hinduism side, right? And so it's our job to, to educate them on that. Uh, but, you know, they, they could have been challenges. I think I took them as opportunities. So, um, Neeraj, um, from a Republican standpoint, I know you guys are pro-life and uh, uh, when it comes to the mother making the choice, uh, you guys don't favor as much as Democrats do. So, what is the cause behind the stance? Well, if you look at the Vedas, there are many stories in the Bhagavad Gita and, and elsewhere uh, and in Hinduism that shows uh, the protection of life. Uh, and, you know, in fact, I say that uh, Hindus are so pro-life, we're vegetarian. Uh, we don't even believe in killing animals and so uh, you know I think that's where, where that belief for me stems from. And when it comes to the freedom of expression you know it's up to the mother how she thinks the future of the baby will be and sometimes they are victimized you know they don't want those kind of kids. So what's your take on that kind of belief? Well in Hinduism we value all life right we value the life of the animal uh, and so you know we could say it's up to the animal's owner to decide whether that animal lives or dies but as vegetarians uh, you know we value even the animal's life and so if we're going to value an animal's life I believe we should also value the life of the baby. Good point. So you know coming to NRA the National Rifle Association um, as a member you have been supporting the free access to the arms uh, the license to many people for the guns uh, not the machine guns of course but the rifles and guns uh, but on the other side there is a strong viewpoint that uh, when people go insane then they do not use the guns in the right way and we have seen that insanity in public shootings in different schools and in achieving hate crimes in public places so how do you still stick to this stance well, you know, look, criminals are going to use firearms criminally uh, regardless of what the law says. That's why they're criminals. And so, uh, you know, there's a legitimate mental health and, and sort of violence issue that our country faces. No one really talks about that. We have to talk about the fact that uh, people believe that violence is the answer. That is completely counter to Hinduism and the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. And so, uh, you know, that is really, I believe, the issue that, that we should be discussing. So when I was first running, uh, we looked at my logo. Right, and the logo, my logo is my phone background, so I'll show anyone who's interested, I'll show you after. Uh, and we had to make a decision in a 95% in a white Christian district, uh, do I use my full name? Antani, right, it's Kachi, but it also could be Italian, right, A and I. Uh, and so, you know, we looked at Niraj Antani. Well, Niraj is very, very clearly Indian. Uh, Antani, uh, at best, uh, is nebulous. Uh, and so we made a decision to put my full name on it, right? Uh, and it's a, it's a conscious one. And, and something that, that I have noticed, and, and we can talk more in detail, you know, at a lot of HA events, events, I talk about this Pew research study that shows that Hinduism in America is the least known religion, more than Buddhism, less known than Buddhism. And so uh, you have a choice of whether to turn down uh, or turn it up, right? And I find, there is more education. Now, I will be honest, right, twice uh, in the last four and a half years, uh, I've gotten a call. I don't know how these people get my cell phone number, but they do. And the person said, you know, hey, are you near Ajitani? I said, yes, I am. They say, are you Muslim? And I'm like, no, I'm Hindu. And they're like, okay, great, you have my vote. <laughs> so, frankly, part of me turning up uh, the dial on my Hinduism uh, is to have my own identity, right? Uh, most conservative Christians, when it comes to Hinduism, quite frankly, for better or for worse, for you know the other uh, you know side, uh, are are neutral, right? Uh, and so we made a conscious decision to turn it up, right? So uh, if someone asks, we tell them that I'm Hindu. Now, uh, then the next question is, well, what's Hinduism? So we explain it to them, and 
you know, Mahatma Gandhi, and, and then we talk about, you know, sort of perhaps Hindu American figures that, you know, they might know, uh, and, and that usually then, you know, solves it. But, but yeah, we made a conscious decision, but look, I can't change my skin color and I can't change the name that's on the ballot, and so you either run into it, and I don't think running away, you know, Nikki and Bobby, right, I mean, they, they, you know, change their names and, and change their religions. I have not done either of those, and so, you know, the ship has sort of sailed on that at this point. Uh, but yeah, we, we made a, a very, very uh, conscious decision. So, you know, you are recognized as the youngest representative. You have been elected three times. 30 under 30 is something that even Forbes has recognized you for. How did you get to this point? Well, it's truly a privilege for me to be the youngest Indian American and the youngest Hindu American elected official uh, in the nation and the history of the country. Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's because of my parents, because of all of the pioneers in the Indian American and Hindu American community uh, that came to America and worked hard and uh, achieved their American dream, uh, which then allowed me to be able to work hard and achieve mine. Awesome. You know, I started politics when I was 16. I entered for my congressman. Uh, it has always uh, been, I think, a, a part of me. You know, my first political memory, I was nine years old. I stayed up all night watching Bush v. Gore and, you know, the Florida chaos. And, and so for me, it's, it's very been, very much been a part of it. Uh, really, the driving force to me is that, you know, I am the youngest uh, Indian American legislator in the country, but I am also, uh, I was, I'm now the third youngest, but I was the youngest in Ohio. And so uh, in Ohio, 20% uh, across the country, 20% of voters uh, are millennials, right, 18 to 29. But 2% of the state legislature are millennials. And so for me, it is very much about representing my generation uh, of Ohioans and, and of Americans. And I think that, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, gender diversity, racial diversity. We really don't talk a lot about age diversity. Uh, and it's, it's very, very important. We have, you know, a 72-year-old who is the chair of the Senate Education Committee, who doesn't know how to email, uh, making education policy when every school has a smart board in it, right? Uh, and there is a very, very real disconnect. And so, um, you know, and, and I would also say is that, look, I think being, growing up the, the son of immigrants, the American dream to me uh, was instilled for me from the very beginning, right? You know, I got to fly out here once a year as a child for the Hewlett Packard annual meeting. Not many, kids got to do that. And so, you know, the community which I am from, I think, uh, for me, it's about representing that community and, and sort of, you know, harboring the American dream for all of that. So, you know, in Hindu philosophy, there are principles of Satyam, Shivam, and Sundaram. One of the firm things that I appreciate in Hinduism is Karmanyavadi Kaaraste Ma Faleshu Kadachan, which is the principle given by Bhagavad Gita to, you know, be firm on the actions without worrying about the results. So, what is one strong point in Hinduism that drives your life, that inspires you? Well, you know, for me, it's really about the values that Hinduism, uh, you know, taught me from, you know, a very young age. It's about, uh, you know, loving your community, loving everyone, respecting uh, your elders, and, and also fighting uh, for our community. You know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of Hindu discrimination out there, whether it's in textbooks or uh, across the seas in, in Bangladesh or Pakistan. Uh, and I think, you know, it's my job as, as an elected official uh, to stand up for our community. Every temple in Ohio is behind a tree line or you have to drive you know, through a forest uh, to get back to it, right? Uh, whereas churches are on the front lines, right? So I have 126 churches in my district. I represent 120,000 people. So there's a church there for every uh, 10,000 people if they want it. You cannot drive from where I grew up to the high school I went without passing a church. It's just simply impossible. Right? Churches host picnics, they host uh, interfaith events, they host forums, they, they open up their doors and let people in. Our temples not tend to not do that, right? And so, you know, people, people fear more than they fear something else, they fear the unknown, right? So a good story, I have a colleague, he calls himself the most conservative member uh, of the legislature. His name is John Becker. Uh, he is a character. And he called me one day and he says, hey, he says, uh, so the, the Cincinnati Temple is in his district. Uh, there's one, one temple. Uh, Cincinnati Temple is in his district. He said, hey, uh, I just 
found this Hindu temple uh, in my district. He never, he's lived there his entire life, never knew about it. And he says, uh, I went in there and a security guard chased me out. <laughs> and he said, what did I do wrong? He said, I just wanted a tour. Uh, and I said, I said, John, I said, that's okay. Uh, you were probably trespassing, uh, but that's also on us. We don't really open our doors very much. And I said, let me call them. I'll get you a tour. We'll have you, uh, you know, on a Sunday morning. We'll feed you eating food, et cetera, et cetera. And so here is their state rep. Now, obviously, they did not know who he was. And they chased him out. Their security guard literally, with, I'm sure, broomstick in hand, chased him out, right? And so that is our problem in a nutshell. Now, that may change. That may be different here in the Bay Area with, with a significant amount of Hindu Americans. But I can tell you in, in, in uh, the heartland of America, in, in Ohio, and the Midwest, that is our problem. Uh, and so I, I actually, because I spoke in the, at the Philadelphia uh, event and, and, then, and then spoke uh, at Abhavihar at, at their temple because of one of the, the HF folks there. Uh, and on my advice, they, they did an event. They did an open event. They had 300 people, 300 Caucasian Americans come in and tour the temple. And they had the local police department there and, and different folks. And it was great. And I said, you know, I told them, I said, the key is advertise free Pala Paneer. Right? Free Pollock Paneer, and the hordes will come. And I said, I said, mail a flyer to the surrounding neighborhood, say free non, free Pollock Paneer, and it will be a great event. <laughs> How important this event is for you, and what message would you like to give to the youngsters to be attracted towards Hinduism and also towards politics, and then narrowing it down to Republicans? Well, the Hindu American Foundation does a great job advocating for Hindu Americans and also Hindus across the world, you know, being persecuted in these Islamist countries. And so, you know, I think we have to support them in that cause. Uh, you know, as far as young Hindus go, uh, you know, look, I think that first we need to make sure that, you know, they're, they're going to temple, that they understand the, the meaning of the Gita and uh, of all of the stories and, and values of Hinduism. Uh, but also, you know, we need to understand that, that Hinduism uh, has to permeate in, in all sides and in all industries. You know, we can't just be in uh, a select few industries uh, or we will be sort of boxed into uh, them. And so, you know, those of us that are in politics, you don't have to run for office, not everyone has to run for office, uh, but voting and being civically engaged Engage is very important. My favorite sort of Hindu civic engagement story actually comes from California, Southern California, uh, in the Song and Iron community. Uh, there was a, a box temple uh, that they wanted to build in Chino Hills, a suburb uh, of LA. And uh, one of the uncles there told me the story, so take that for what it is. I assume it's true, but you never know. Um, and I got one laugh out of that, thank you. Uh, and so, you know, he said uh, that, you know, when, when VAPS was, was trying to build this temple, uh, you know, obviously they followed the zoning laws, and Padmo, I think, was on her city zoning board before being state rep, uh, but they were denying it, and they were denying it based on the height of the temple and, you know, a few other sort of measurements. Uh, and so a group of them, a, a group of Chino Hills uh, residents, went to the mayor and said, hey, look, and, and no offense, uh, mayors, uh, but they said, look, uh, we've got all this money, and if you don't let us have our temple, we will find another candidate, and we will ensure that he beats you. Uh, they very quickly got their temple. Uh, and so, you know, that, that show of, of force, quite frankly, uh, and I'm sure they said it nicer than I did, uh, but that show of force uh, shows the importance of, of being involved, right? In school boards, very important when it comes to how Hinduism is taught, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, even that little that involvement at the, the municipal level uh, got them their temple uh, and got them more importantly their temple how they wanted to, right? And that's their right. And so you know, everyone has a lobbyist. Everyone has a lobbyist in every state house in the country. Everyone has a lobbyist uh, in Congress, right? So you know, to have a, a professionalized advocacy group advocating for Hindu Americans. Is very important. The Catholic Church has a, a professional front. Every other religion, uh, you know, has that face. And, and as far as I can find, actually, as far as advocating for us on a religious basis, HAF is it. So, what's your take on the prospects of Republicans in 2020? Uh, well, you know, I think very good. I think Democrats will do good in Democrat areas like California. I think Republicans will do well in Republican areas, and then. Uh, in swing states Ohio, in swing states like Ohio, uh, they'll have to make their case. 
Awesome. Any final message to your India TV viewers? No, thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. How to get people besides Nan and Balak Banir to engage more with their communities. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Well, you know, thank you, Samir, once again to, to HAF, Dr. Magani, everyone, for, for having me. You know, HAF has been a, a great uh, organization. You know, I wish I could say that, you know, I am here all for uh, uh, the, the good of the cause, but frankly, uh, for us that are, are elected, particularly as a Hindu American Republican, uh, it's selfish, right? Uh, because I need my voters to know what Hinduism is. Uh, I need them to understand, you know, the tenets of Hinduism, uh, to understand our values, to understand our culture. Uh, otherwise, you know, perhaps if, if I run, you know, for higher office one day, uh, it will become an issue. Uh, and it has. You know, I, I have, uh, you know, friends across the country who, you know, have run in, in conservative Republican uh, areas. Uh, and it's not that they, it was anti-Hindu or, or anti-Indian, it's that they thought they were, uh, you know, Muslim. They thought they were, uh, you know, something else. And so, you know, it is, it is very, very, it can be very, very, you know, problematic. Um, and, and there is, I think, a, a huge divide uh, of where, you know, the majority of, of Hindu and, and Indian Americans live versus the rest of the country, right? You know, they, they are very, very concentrated you know, here in, in the 10, 15, you know, largest cities uh, in America. Uh, and HAF is really, again, the only uh, professionalized advocacy group doing this, right? You know, I, I watched, you know, I, I almost blew a gasket, you know, during the Reza Islam CNN issue, right? When, when he had this basically hit job on Hinduism. Uh, and the only group that was responding uh, in kind was HAF, right? Very strongly with force. Uh, and, and, you know, that is what we need. And, and again, you know, there are many, 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 many great uh, Indian American and, and Hindu organizations, uh, you know, each have, you know, their purpose. Uh, but we need an organization like HAF, uh, you know, fighting that fight. Now, there may not be uh, you know, issues here. Now, I, I think there are with, you know, the tragedy in, in Sunnyvale, et cetera. Uh, but I can tell you that, you know, it's in the heartland of America, it's in the South, uh, you know, where we need HAF and, and your support here, I think, is, is very, very important. You know, Hinduism still to this day, there was a 2013 pupil and there was a 2018 pupil. Hinduism is still the least known religion in America. Uh, less than Buddhism, less than uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, etc. Uh, and that's a problem uh, because there will be a, a very, very big tipping point when things like the Reza Islam documentary happen. Uh, you know, when things like, you know, the, the attack of, of uh, Indian soldiers in, in the Kashmiri region happen, uh, there has to be an organization with professional staff advocating for Hindus in America and abroad. So, uh, thank you for having me, uh, and, and very happy to be here to support you. Thank you very much.